In the, in, in the 26 years you're in Morocco, how, how would you say your paintings developed? Well, you had the, the first one, the Agadir period, which was, uh, I think the colour and uh, Marx was the most dominant thing. It's quite expressionist in a way. Then when I got fed up with that, I went in Rabat, I changed. And, and that splits into two lots. The early Rabat ones, where I was using a lot of grey, and, and the subject is slowly coming more and more and more important until I managed to get rid of, get the, the technique under control so that if you don't like the subject, you wouldn't like the painting, if you can't tolerate the subject, rather. And because uh, it really is about what I saw as things are seen. And uh, well, the grip is artificial, of course. You've got the colour, you've got the coloured panels, and you've got the grey panels. But the grey panels throw, throws the eye onto the colour because the eye always goes to colour first. And they can be, and they they're getting harder and harder and harder. I'm not, I I I don't go to the picturesque things in in Morocco, like there's no camels, not a camel in sight. There's no barbs, no sweet people, because it's quite hard in a way. Morocco is quite hard. I don't know, in some way, I'm intrigued to, with that sort of thing. So would you say that's a reflection of Morocco or a reflection of yourself? Both things, right. right. Yeah. I suppose I'm not a very jolly person. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what would you say a typical subject for your painting? Is there a typical subject for your paintings, would you say? Well, yeah, the, yeah my life. As I, as I go about my life, I go, I, yeah, as I go about my life. One day somebody, a kid said to me, or a young man said to me, I went to City Kassem last week. I've never seen such a horrible town in my life. And I thought, well, I've got to have that. I must see it. It was a Moroccan boy. He says, I've never seen any. So come the next Sunday, I was on the train to City Kassem. It's one hour from Rabat. So I buy the ticket. The man said, yeah, but where are you going? Sidi Kassam. He says, yeah, but where are you going? You change it, Sidi Kassam. You go to Fez or, Ka or Tangier. I said, no, I want to go to Sidi Kassam. All right. So they give me the ticket. I get on the train. The ticket collector comes along, comes to the same thing. Yeah, monsieur, where are you going? Where are you going? Sidi Kassam. No, 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 no. Where are you going? Where? You know, same thing. And uh, when I got off the train and I... Was, and I went through the barrier. The ticket collector called me back, Monsieur, Monsieur, uh, you want platform 16 or something. Why? He said, this is City Kassem, you don't want it. Yes, I do. <laughs> and I walked on and I wasn't disappointed. It was rather nice. There's a time that's, uh, there's an oil refinery there. And when I was, that was the first thing I wanted to draw was the oil refinery. There was a soldier in the tower, he started shouting at me, waving his hand, no, 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 you're not allowed to draw this. Oh. And then I went into the town, I had lunch, the first cafe, that was quite nice, actually. And I made way, my way to the town from the station. There was a man peeing in the road, happy as anything, because it's a bus terminal, I think. And he didn't care. And I went to the time, and I have to say, I've never seen a time so poor in Morocco. But the people were so nice. Moroccan people are nice. Nobody gave me any trouble whatsoever. And they were all mostly very poor. But nobody gave me any trouble. So I did lots of drawing. And maybe six months later, the man in the centre of the painting of... Uh, Sidi Kassem, Five Good Men in Sidi Kassem. All those men I did drawings of in Sidi Kassem. I saw three men sat down with their hands over their head, obviously, obviously very worried. So I saw three of them around the time. Then a little butch 
dwarf, I don't know whether you should call people dwarfs now, but I don't know what the word is, little man, and he was very butch. And then there was the other man with like a bandage around his head, which is a sort of turban, he was going through a dustman. And there's a man peeing. And I went up through a little alleyway, turned the corner, and the man in the centre, he, he was confronting me, I nearly jumped out of my skin. It looks like inbreeding, I should think. You scared a lot of people like that in Morocco. And then the, which was a builder's yard with a red, red wall, waterproof wall at the end. That was a builder's yard. That was real. The only thing I really invented in that painting was the uh, composition of the people, because they weren't all together like that. And uh, I put a flag in the heap of sand. Moroccan flag. But I like that. I don't think that one has to choose beautiful subjects. I don't see why that is necessary at all. I, th I, I think interesting, is, interesting subjects is, are better. But the painting has to be beautiful, because beautiful is just a composition with a ju just a juxtaposition of elements. And they are beautiful and well balanced. So were you trying to convey anything with this painting, The Five Good Men of City Cassandra? Yeah, I tried to show it. I tried to show City Cassandra, that's quite quite City Cassandra, and what I saw and what hit me, what touched me. I don't think, I don't sit down and think of a big message to put over, because it's a painting. If you have a real message to put over, it would be better to use words. But you can show things and draw attention to things that would be always overlooked, especially in Morocco. Nobody would paint a picture like that. Everything's got to be sweet and pretty and charming. So you're not, you're obviously not a painter who wants to paint things that are necessarily attractive. No. No, well, I'm what? attracted to things that are the opposite, actually. I guess it begs the question, why do you paint? Yeah, that's a good one. Let's stop me going mad, I suppose. Yeah, I suppose, I suppose, yeah. Yeah, because it's very much about me as well. I do have a lot of sympathy for these people. Every painting that I paint, the subjects I... I do have sympathy with. Yeah, you've got some point behind it. Yeah. And uh, that's why I call them the five good men of Sidi Kassem because that's a tribute to how nice they were, because I went back there several times. I went, I went there with a nice a French girl I, I knew, a, a, young lady, a young girl much younger than me, and she was crying when we was in the cafe, saying, we shouldn't be here, we shouldn't be here watching it. We shouldn't be here. She felt ashamed of observing. Well, we shouldn't. We shouldn't be just looking, us, in a way so wealthy compared to those people. And uh, I said, no. If I, the only thing I can do to help them, the only thing I am, and the only thing I can do, I'm a painter, and I show it. And I've done lovely paintings. Five, I think five very nice paintings of Sidi Kassam. It's a nice place. I like it. I could live there.